of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome. My name is Reverend Carla Van Dellen and I just want to say welcome to this time of worship. We are so glad that each and every one of you are here, virtually of course, but here at Barhaven United Church we are an open-minded, open-hearted community. And we're actually on a very intentional journey of becoming an officially recognized affirming congregation. So what does that mean, you may ask? Well, it means that we are intentionally looking at all the different ways that we can be welcoming and, and including all people, especially the LGBTQS plus community. We are taking this journey of exploration because we are seeking to follow the way of Jesus by engaging in the work of compassion, love, and justice. So wherever you are on your faith journey, with whatever questions you may carry, you are welcome here. Whomever you love, whatever your gender, gender identity, your sexual orientation, your ethnicity, cultural identity or ability, you are welcome here. Through our worship today, we are going to learn about something called pie, what that means and the importance of embracing its message. Today, so well, on Sunday at 11 o'clock, whenever we have our coffee Zoom after the church service, we are going to be discussing and exploring a little bit more about Pi. And we're actually going to have a very special guest, the Reverend Don Uranio, the minister of George Street United Church in Peterborough. And he has been very involved over the last number of decades with walking with congregations and also with the um, various levels of governance within the church and walking with them as they became affirming as well. So we're looking forward to, to hearing him. He's, um, he's a wonderful guy, full of stories, and, uh, and I'm sure that we'll all learn from his experience. So here we are. So let us worship, let us be fun, let us be playful with the Spirit, and may we know that we are not alone on this journey. So friends, let us worship.
Friends, if you are following along at home, please join me in the call to worship. We gather together on this National Affirming Sunday, celebrating the all-inclusive love of God, worshiping our Maker who delights in diversity, worshiping the Lover who in Jesus reached out, reached out and accepted and embraced everyone, despite all social, class, ethnic, and spiritual barriers. Worshiping the Keeper, the Spirit, who continues to break down the walls that divide us. Thanks be to God. I invite you, let us pray. Beloved one, your embrace is a refuge from violence and hatred. Those who have turned away, forgotten, or persecuted find belonging in you. We hope to embody such love in this place. May we be a sanctuary, a shelter, a safe place to turn. May we endeavor to learn from each other and grow together in love that protects and uplifts. In Jesus' name we make this prayer. Amen. As we gather to extinguish our fourth candle on this fourth Sunday of Lent, we know that we move ever closer towards the cross. Today is known as Later Sunday, which means Rejoice Sunday, because even in our Lenten observances, we celebrate Sundays as days of resurrection and celebration. As our flames become fewer and fewer, we can imagine that if our sanctuary were fully darkened, we could see very little. So often our wide open eyes are not able to see the beauty of God's creation around, the beauty of those who are around us and who share our days with us, the possibility that each day brings through the generosity of the Creator. And so today we extinguish the candle of joy to remind us that we are not always able to see the joy, the joy in our lives that is beside us, within us, and around us. Let us pray. God of vision and light, forgive our blindness caused through our selfishness and self-centeredness. Help us to uncover the light that leads us through each day. Help us to uncover the light that shares the love of God for all people. In the name of Jesus, the light of the world, the burning passion of the cross, we make this prayer. Amen. No, licking doesn't count. Definitely not during COVID. What's that? Oh, you did wash them for 15 seconds? Okay, very good. We'll have to make sure about that after. So, I thought we would make something called Jesus pie. Have you ever heard of that? No? No? Oh, well, I'll tell you what Jesus pie is. So we have all of our ingredients. We have our mixing bowl here. So a Jesus pie is, we put one cup of flour in, and the flour uh, symbolizes one cup of justice. 
Okay, so we put some of that in. And, uh, oh, I see that we didn't get the shortening out. You didn't get the shortening out? No? Well, that's okay. Shortening will symbolize a cup of affirmation. And a cup of water for compassion. And a sprinkling of salt for courage. Here, you want to put that in there? Okay, put that in there. First, uh, that. Oh, and an egg will symbolize respect. And um, that holds everything together. So, do you want to break it? Okay, we'll just put that in there for a moment. Oh, and uh, vinegar, and a little bit of vinegar symbolizes truth, because sometimes this can be a little bit bitter to swallow, but we need truth. And, um, and let's see here, we'll take this out, you're gonna stir a little bit? There's not much to stir, but... I know Thumper, once we get everything in there, he'll wanna get right in with his paws, but that's okay. <laughs> so. You know, on this pie Sunday, all the things we put in there, that kind of symbolizes the outside of the pie, right? And what does the outside of the pie do? Oh, it's a container. It's full of goodness. That's right. So the outside of the pie is like the church, like the building or the structure. Um, but then what do we put in a pie? Carrots? Well, I guess we could have a carrot pie. I'm sure somebody has a good recipe for that. But this one is going to be a berry pie, like a bumbleberry pie almost, which is very popular on the, in the Maritimes. Because a bumbleberry pie is a mixture of a whole bunch of different types of berries. So I brought some from home here. So we've got, let's see, we've got strawberries and blueberries and blackberries. And uh, what else? Raspberries. Okay, so we'll put that in there. <laughs> now all the berries, they symbolize all the different people. All the different people, whether they're from the LGBTQS plus community, whether it's people that have different skin colors, ethnicity, ability, or disability. Let's see here. Oh, that's right. What's up? and different ages, that's right. And some have paws, and some have hands and feet, that's right. And um, you know the, um, the taste of the pie, when everything comes together, um, that is because all of the berries give a beautiful uh, sweetness to it. It's the, it's the people that are inside. It's not the crust, even though the crust is good, it's all the people that are inside. That's right, and what's that? Oh, and a little bit of sugar to add sweetness. Well, that sounds really good. What's that? You made a pie too? What? You even have a photo? You don't have an Instagram account, do you? No? Oh, we're going to see your photo now? <gasps> that is a wonderful looking pie, Thumper. I think your mother helped you with that a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so, well, we're celebrating pie, which means um, uh, public and in, in intentional and explicit. And this means that we have to work at it or be really, um, have it at the top of our mind all the time because it's important to, to name um, things and to talk about things and to think about how whatever we do in the church affects everybody that comes and maybe people that are looking for a church home as well because people want to feel loved because God loves everyone. And so this is a way for us to be intentional. You think pie is a good way to do that? <laughs> well, it's just one of the ways. But um, our worship service today, you'll find out more about pie. And, uh, oh, what's that? And coffee hour too? What's that? You want to listen to Don Uranio? Well, I think we'll have to bring you a coffee time on Sunday. So. I hope you have a wonderful week, and uh, I'm not sure what kind of pie this is going to turn out, but if this fails, I know Thumper has a good one at home. So blessings, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> we now turn to our scriptures for this day. Let us pray. 
God of wisdom, strange and surprising, come and move us. Enliven our faith, stir our spirits, stretch our minds and the capacity of our hearts. Let your word renew our hope and lead us on paths of justice and truth. Amen. <clears throat> Both of our readings today deal with the struggle that the early church had to include or how to include Gentiles. Now, Gentiles are anyone that wasn't Jewish at the time. How to include them as followers of Jesus without them first having to become Jewish themselves. So we will hear that following Jesus' example of inclusivity was a difficult stance to take even so shortly after his death, when his message perhaps was freshest. So our first reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. And it's Peter's report to the church at Jerusalem. <clears throat> now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered down by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times that everything was pulled up again in heaven. Our second reading is from the Epistle to the Galatians, chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. And this one is entitled, Paul Rebukes Peter at Antioch. <clears throat> but when Cephas came to Antioch, I posed him to his face, because he stood self-condemned. For until certain people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But after they came, he drew back and kept himself separate for fear of the cir of circumcision faction. And the other Jews joined him in this hypocrisy, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not acting consistently with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, if you though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? May your wisdom blossom in us with the aid of your Holy Spirit. With God's help, may it be so. Amen. <clears throat> I invite you to let us pray. O Holy One, we come before you in praise. May the wisdom found in Scripture challenge and transform us to meet your call in today's world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we just heard, a major question was facing the early church. And that question, which had profound impact for them at the time, was whether non-Jews could become part of the Christian community without first accepting the Jewish faith. For example, did a person need to be circumcised or follow the Jewish dietary laws before they could be considered followers of Jesus? For us sitting here in the 21st century, it might seem a very strange argument, but as a point of fact, it, has, it is very much connected to the reality of Affirming Sunday. For the argument being made in these readings is, who's in, who's out, who is acceptable and who isn't, and maybe even more importantly, on what basis? Biblical law, societal norms, God's revelation of love? As humans, we don't react very well to difference. And 
There's probably many reasons. It could be out of ignorance, fear, or perhaps because of our heightened desire to, um, to gain personal status, therefore creating a hierarchy. We find many ways of excluding the other. Our history is full of terrible discrimination based on false ideas surrounding race, ethnicity, class, and religion, just to name a few. Now in today's service, our service together on this National Affirming Sunday, the focus is on sexual orientation and on gender identity. Over and over, it seems that societal prejudice buttresses itself with religious blessings and claims that God is actually judging these differences so that some groups of people are seen as second-class citizens. Now, the passage from Acts focuses on the issue of what food is clean or profane, drawing on the, on the instructions from the book of Leviticus with the details established by Jewish tradition. In his dream, Peter recognizes that God's grace stands above and beyond all rules that try to define some creatures or some people to be unworthy and therefore excluded. This belief that all people, that all things are inherently good was so important to the development of the early church that the details of this dream are presented a second time in the book of Acts chapter 11. It is interesting to note that in Galatians chapter 2 verses 11 to 14, that Paul confronts Peter about his hypocrisy. When on home turf and confronted by the conservative wing of the early Christian church, Peter hesitates to speak up about his theology of inclusion. An example of why Pi Day is so necessary today and probably back then as well. The LGBTQ 2S plus community can I believe, claim Peter's dream, his courage in drawing out the consequences, and then his subsequent ducking and hypocrisy as parallel to their own experiences and the reality of church life. This story highlights for us the fact that it can be, at times, very, very hard to stand up for what we know is right, especially when we face opposition. While Paul a person that preached that in Christ there is no east or west or slave or free or male or female and that all foods were in fact clean, could act in such a way that was opposite to his beliefs highlights the reality that following our beliefs are not always easy. Sometimes we succeed and sometimes we fall short. But it is the community that reminds us calls us back to our beliefs, to the true teachings that Jesus left us in his actions. And that is why we need to practice and to celebrate Pi Day. Now, Pi stands for Public, Intentional, Explicit. So Public, Intentional, Explicit. In order to do what we need to do, we need to hold each other up to hold each other up so that we can be honest and accountable to one another. Now, just as I practiced during Black History Month, uh, just a couple weeks ago in February, as we looked at inclusion and at welcoming today, I also wish to, wish to share with you some firsthand accounts about what being int intentionally affirming means to those that are affected the most by our actions. As you watch and listen, I hope that the spirit of compassion and generosity moves within you. We are on a journey here at BUC that will not end when a vote is taken, but if we do decide to become affirming, it will be a decision that will infuse everything that we do, everything that we do and who we become in the future. With God's help, may it be so. So we 
as LGBTQ2S plus members don't necessarily um, feel safe in all the circles that we navigate our lives through. And so in order to feel safe in a space, we have to be truly embraced and truly accepted for who we are and who we love. And that includes some work on the part of faith communities in terms of being very public, intentional and explicit about their desire to welcome us in and their acceptance of us as who we are and for who we love. The Affirming Church to me has members of the queer community within it, uh, holding positions of um, you know significance within the church itself, a space where individuals in the LGBTQ2S plus community feel safe among other individuals who are also in attendance with that faith community, and where people are free to show up as their true and full authentic selves. Certainly Camelops United Church is a space I think where many members of the queer community feel very very welcome. There are many very visible signs of inclusion um, outside the church. So there's the, the ramp as you walk up with the pride colors, there's a pride flag in the window, and as well on the outside of the church a big affirming ministry sign that's there year round. So for members of the local LGBTQ2S plus community, certainly it's a sign of welcome and embrace and open arms, and so certainly a space that we feel safe in occupying. For me, it's it's about safety. We want we want to believe that this is a safe place. I am a middle-aged, straight, white, Christian guy. Most of the world's a safe place for me. So I don't know that much about the marginalized. I mean, I try to I try to empathize. In the affirming process, there's a body of knowledge there, that this is what it means, this is what a safe place looks like. So let's do that. It's also a flag, it's a sign that says this is a safe place because it's been tested, it's met a standard. Uh, it's like the little green sign that you get in the restaurant window that says this is a safe place. At my age, I've been from when it was illegal to be gay to now being almost totally openly gay and not fearing for our lives. I had gone from Sunday school teacher, choir member, uh, member in good standing with the church to being escorted to the door because I told the truth during a meeting that I was gay. And there were sufficient people at that meeting who were not going to tolerate that. And so I was escorted to the door. In truth, it broke my heart. It took me a long time to come back. I did miss having a church to call home. Kamloops United Church is a really good example of an affirming church. Placement of that quilt is very intentional. When you come through the main sanctuary doors, that's the first thing you see, intentionally. The rule here is, it is never to be moved. <laughs> Shall we gather at the river Where bright angel feet have trod With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the so for Riverside to become an affirming congregation means a lot to me personally um, because it means it's a place of inclusiveness. It means for someone like myself who is coming for the first time, I know that I can sit next to my partner and feel comfortable. I remember the first time we came to Riverside, we were very worried about thoughts and uh, opinions of others to the point where we would leave space in between us so that you know we wouldn't get the awkward glances and such. So as we spent more time at Riverside, we came to know that this was an inclusive place and we really were made to feel so welcome and, and from that point forward we knew that this was a, a home for us. So I know there are a lot of people who are concerned about having the label of a firm attached to our community because Riverside's already a very welcoming community to all sorts of people and so there are people who maybe don't think that we need to have that label attached but as somebody who is from the LGBT community the label's really important because for so many of us, we have been excluded from churches because of a label. And that, that word, affirm, really uh, speaks to people who have been excluded and specifically says that you are included. Coming from a religious background, um, I didn't always find the acceptance in my church, but I did find it in my family and friends. So to see McKillop being a, a church that's accepting and loving and affirming, is amazing. I've, I've been to the church and I've been to events at the church and I've always been so proud that you guys are there beside us. That visibility because a lot of people are scared of churches because maybe their church didn't um, 
accept them or they didn't feel that love and maybe their family even dropped them. So there's a lot of stigma with churches and the LGBTQ community. So bringing that awareness that you do love us and you support us. And I know that. <laughs> I hope you all know that. <laughs> My impression of religion is that it's often wrought with lots of hypocrisy. And uh, I think people always search to have that sense of community, to be a part of something. So one of the wonderful things about this church in particular is that I really feel that on a very genuine level. Lawrence United Church or any sort of church that affirms and lets people know that yes, we're gonna stand up for you because that's our values and our principles. That means the world, and I think that can even be life-saving. I want to be part of a faith community that the circle is absolutely wide, that there is no one left on the outside, and no uncertainty um, about being included. It's certainly not about who's out, um, but it's all about uh, ensuring that everybody feels like they're in. Since its beginning, the church was meant to be a place of chosen family, a community of outcasts and outlaws, dreamers, prophets, and humble disciples of love. In the company of divine presence, we create belonging and nurture justice. With gratitude for the sacred labors of love in this place, let us bring our offerings to God and to one another. Let us pray. <clears throat> ever-present God, we gather as a diverse crowd of virtual, of virtual, worshipful followers. We come for your blessings on what we give, but also for your blessing for who we are becoming as we give. May we, by your blessing, become the disciples of your radical love in our community. With God's help, we pray. Amen. We now come to the part in our service where we have the opportunity to hold each other up in prayer. And as the Quakers, the, the Society of Friends say or do whenever they pray, is that they imagine that they are holding that person in the light of God, that beautiful place where that person can receive what, whatever gifts that God has for that person of wholeness and of being. So let us pray for ourselves and one another together. Bold and beloved one, throughout history you have revealed yourself to us in ways that surprise and disrupt. You shocked the world when you came to be with us as a vulnerable baby born into a family fleeing political persecution. Though the scandal of your embodiment in Jesus led to crucifixion, still your spirit of new life persisted among the marginalized. You live among us today in the lives of black trans women 
whose experiences of violence are dismissed and ignored. You are enfleshed among bisexual people living with HIV AIDS and babies born into the care of lesbian women. You wander school halls as trans children and navigate the streets as queer couples walking hand in hand while onlookers stare. You come to us as LGBTQ, S plus, and youth with no home, and as two-spirited people still fighting against the impacts of colonization, erasure, and stolen land. At times, we are offended by your self-expression. You take on flesh and people, places, and ideas we've been taught to fear or despise. And so we struggle. Our hearts harden. Our hospitality recoils, but still your love persists. Through beauty, compassion, and truth, you lure us into laying down our need to control. You move us, free us, embrace us. And by your grace, we are brought into the sacred labors of justice and transformation. We become free in Christ to reject all evil and oppression. In that spirit of love and with trust in your unfolding goodness in this world, we offer our prayers for those we name and those we hold in our heart. We pray for wholeness for those in treatment and those awaiting test results. for those living with physical and emotional pain, for those lives lost in this country and around the world, especially today on the one year anniversary of the global pandemic. We pray for frontline workers, We pray for ourselves, for those things that cheer us and sadden us to the core of our being. Incarnate one, we give you thanks for all the ways your gifts renew us in body, spirit, and mind. May the promise and realization of your love compel us to right all that continues to do harm to any of our neighbors. Letting no institution or narrow thinking hold us back, make us people who boldly pursue collective justice and tend gently to the world's pain. With Christ's wisdom and aid, may it be so. Amen. With love, with compassion, with truth, with the need to know that we are not alone and to be responded to by God, that in fact, we are God's beloved. We say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
So go from this time with open eyes, with open ears, and open hearts, ready to encounter the Holy One in the daily, in the ordinary, in the flesh. Go from this time with a daring and tender love, seeking to mend God's beloved creation wherever and wherever you can. Know that God, who is love, goes with you, within, beside, and far ahead of you. Go into this day, into your life, trusting that you are held in the loving heart of the holy mystery, now and forever. And let the people say, Amen. Blessings on your week. I hope wherever you are, you are safe. And we will see you next week. God bless.